3.2, it's a letter of support for the local road improvement program funding application with Steele County. And then we'll go to Chris Busey of City Administrator. Thank you. Um, Steele County has identified some deficiencies in the city of Owatonna on the east side of the county. This has long been studied and planned for back dating back to about 1993. We did set aside land for this project, proposed project in 2004. Um, it is included in our strategic plan and also the 2040 transportation plan and it identified it as an important corridor for the city. It would address the north-south traffic, it would address increasing congestion downtown and then help facilitate future development. Uh, Greg, uh, County Engineer Greg Ilka is here and he's going to have a PowerPoint to kind of give you an overview of the whole project as it is right now and answer any questions you might have. Now this um, provides additional funding for this rather large uh, project which will help all of us. So I'll just turn it over to Greg. Thank you Chris. Uh, good evening Mayor and members of Council. I appreciate the opportunity to come and present on our uh, important project in the community. So the 2023 legislature provided about $102 million for the local road improvement program. Um, maximum grants are uh, one and a half million dollars. So we did uh, select the that quarter to apply uh, make application to get a million and a half dollars. One of that parts of the application are letters of support. Um, so we've uh, been to uh, the chamber, um, OPU, and now we're at the city council. You can uh, move to the next slide, please. So I, I think most everybody knows what, what is the east side border, right? It's the new north and south left roadway on the east side of the city. Um, extending from southeast 18th to Kenyon Road. And then there's uh, a differentiation with what's the study. So it, that is the required environmental study for the proposed roadway, including both the state environmental assessment worksheet and the federal what we call categorical exclusion, which is a study of impacts and proposed actions to address them. So a categorical exclusion falls below uh, an EIS or an EA on the federal process. Um, uh, because there was an EAW done on most of this corridor back in 1999, the feds and the state said, you know, we know it's not going to lead to an EIS, here's the proper um, documentation follow and, and process. So next slide. In the, the pink area there is essentially the study area that we're looking at um, for the proposed corridor. Very similar to previous studies that have been done. This one does not extend all the way over to our County Highway 43. Um, we're in a more narrow study area. Next slide. So one of the concepts I'm going to touch on a few times through this uh, presentation is roadway functional classification. Essentially, um, the roadway network is out there to serve you know, our purposes, but it is a system and you need all of the uh, different classifications to make the system work properly. Right? The local streets, your, your city streets, your township roads, some county roads, they, their main function is to provide access to the properties adjacent to those roadways. At the other end of the spectrum, the arterials, like Interstate 35, US 14, you know, their, their purpose is to provide mobility, get people from where they are to where they want to be, right? You want to go to Rochester, you want to go to Albert, you want to get to the city, you get on an arterial. The collectors are in the middle there, right? They collect all the local traffic, get them to their destinations, or to the arterials so they can get out of town. But it's, it's an important concept from a transportation perspective. Next slide, please. So I'm going to go through this quickly, and then I, I get each of these points in a separate slide. But right, so in the environmental documentation, we have to document the purpose and need of the East Side Corridor. Now, the purpose of the corridor is to improve the connectivity of Steele County's transportation network and meet the near-term and future travel needs on the east side of the city of Donna, as well as the adjacent townships, for both motorized and non-motorized users. So the primary needs out there uh, is the mobility uh, due to the port connectivity. Also, as I just 
discuss the functional collector network, right? We're lacking collectors out in that area. So we need to build the system properly so it'll work well for us. Um, the lack of these two issues, uh, one and two, leads to the downtown congestion impact, right? Traffic's already uh, rolling through downtown because there's no other routes to get there. So there's traffic there, it doesn't need to be there, it's creating congestion and it's forecast to uh, get worse there. Um, the land use and anticipated growth areas are there on the east side of the city. Um, and you know, to get from the northeast side to the southeast side is a um, challenge. And the secondary need is the walkability and bike. So I know you have a nice trail plan. We are proposing uh, a trail with the corridor down 1826 and north-south along the corridor. Some of the additional considerations we'll be documenting, the consistency with the officially mapped corridor, and the consistency with the county and city plan, both the county and the city 2040 transportation plans, as well as the city of Ogden's development plan from 2006. Next slide, please. So jumping into each of the areas, what are we talking about with the problem of mobility uh, and the poor connectivity? So the diagram on the right shows the study area, and then we point out there's four miles between collectors out there, north-south collectors, between Cedar Avenue and our Highway 43. Generally, in a developed area, you want collectors at a half to three-quarter mile. So we've already lost the opportunity that close to Cedar. So Right, we need to see something as close to the uh, east side of the city limits as we can get. So, because of this, right, drivers are using the neighborhood streets to piece together indirect routes to travel north the south. Many of these trips go through downtown, as I mentioned, so they're not destined for downtown. And that unintended use of the network limits its ability to serve the existing development and the future growth areas. Next slide, please. So, getting back to the functional class network, can we? Kind of uh, on the right the diagram shows the um, relationship of the access and the mobility and the type of roadways that serve those functions. The property, like I already indicated, property road networks include the local roads, collector roads, and arterials. And the primary role of the collector is to collect that traffic from those local streets and get them out to important destinations such as arterials, schools, shopping, etc. And the study area lacks routes to serve the north south trips typical of collector roadways. So, by uh, building the east side border, we're trying to solve that problem. Next slide, please. The downtown congestion impact. Um, so, the city and the county completed 2040 transportation plans um, in 2021, and it, both plans identified that there were going to be uh, the forecast traffic are going to create congestion on particularly. Two street segments, Mineral Springs Road, from Cherry Street to St. Paul Road, and <coughs> North Street East from our Highway 45 to Cedar Avenue North. But without the east side corridor, congestion on these roadways will create a demand to widen them to increase capacity. Now, I certainly don't want to contemplate widening Mineral Springs Road, and I imagine the city council does not either. Next slide, please. Land use and anticipated growth areas. So the yellow in the diagram is uh, where the land use growth, the, the low, uh, excuse me, low density residential housing is planned for. Um, you know, and, and so poor roadway connectivity out there impacts the ability of the road network to serve the existing and planned land use. And the trend of residential development on the east side in combination with the high school continue to generate additional trips between the northeast and southeast portions of the city. Again, we don't have an east side corridor, we're going to plumb all that traffic through downtown. Next slide. The walkability and bikeability. Now, the lack of the north-south roadway connection impacts the ability of non-motorized users, hikers and bikers, to access several destinations served by existing east-west routes, including the <coughs> high school, soccer pond, complex, Lincoln Elementary School, and the other uh, parts that I mentioned there. And as I mentioned, we are planning to include the trail along the entire corridor, as well as 26 and 18 series. Uh, 
Next slide. Some of the additional considerations on the purpose and need. Um, the, the proposed corridor is consistent with the officially mapped corridor, uh, consistent with the transportation plans, and it's consistent with the city of Bolton's development plan. Next slide. So what is an official map? So, right, we all know there's been studies going on here for decades. Um, and an EAW was completed in 1999 for a good portion of this quarter. Um, that it was from US 14 to the main road. Um, in the intervening time, right, we know we weren't going to get a connection to 14, so that kind of um, went away. And the reason we're doing another EAW is uh, our corridor the extents are greater than the initial DAW. But based on that DAW, the county board recorded an official map on that board. Now, what's an official map? Well, it's, it's a legal document that gives the, uh, the agency the uh, right of first refusal if a development comes in. So it was it was mapped as a 150-foot corridor. And, you know, for whatever reason, North Country uh, additions came in there. The city uh, was able to get 100 feet. I speculate, right, if they were talking to the county, and the county said, we don't have the money for that today. So fortunately, the city was able to get 100 feet. And if you look at it, most all our county roads are built within 100 feet today. Um, and any collector out 100 feet uh, is, is sufficient. The other interesting thing with those flats, uh, they were all conditioned on the fact that there would be no residential access provided to any of those properties within the North Country Edition. So, for those of us who have looked at this recently, it's like this was obviously going to be a collector out. Uh, I know there, there may be others that disagree with that, but the, the fact is. The county is not looking to get the extra 50 feet out of North Country Division. We are not going to touch those properties. Uh, there's a 100 foot right away there. If we can't build it within 100 feet, we'll go to the east. So that's, that's the facts. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, in 21, we uh, completed and adopted Open City and the County's 2040 Transportation <coughs> Public meetings, listening sessions, and open houses we had on that. Uh, the community expressed its support, excuse me, for the East Side Corner. Um, so it's consistent with those. Next slide. Um, completed in 2006, the city's development plan shows a proposed collector route between Southeast 18th Street and Dane Road on this very similar line. Um, new, the, uh, as I understand it, 2006 development plan is the most recent plan the city has until your town plan is adopted. So it guides all the development within the city. So it was very clearly on the plan in 2006. Next slide. So our environmental process will have an alternatives analysis. We're showing those here. There's five with one has three subsets. Um, and then there will be a no build uh, analysis. That will be documented with the, the uh, environmental documents. And next slide. Um, just the diagram to, to kind of show um, the different cross sections, right? A lot of that proposed roadway is, is going to be out in farm country, which would most likely be the top cross section. It's a 130 foot wide um, section with showing the trail on the left side, what would be the west side of the roadway. The lower uh, cross section is an urban section where you put storm sewer and curb and gutter in to be able to narrow up your uh, roadway. Um, as you see, it totals up 49 feet. So uh, that could easily be squeezed into the 100 foot adjacent to North Country Edition if the county board decides to do that. Uh, next slide. Uh, just a, a 
uh, project schedule. Um, the construction now has been pushed out to 2026 at the earliest, given um, the environmental <coughs> studies taking longer than anticipated, which is not surprising. That's generally how it works out. Um, but you know, we are here. We're in the middle of the environmental document process. So there's there's a long way to go, and you know, I know people would like to have answers six months ago, a year ago. That's not the way these uh, environmental um, processes play out. They're on large projects of this nature. They usually take um, year, year and a half, two years. You know, there's, there's some that have taken decades. So um, we do have a project website. <coughs> Type into your browser uh, address, eastsideporter.com, will take you to that. Um, and, uh, you know, lots of lots of good information on there. And with that, I, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to try to answer them. Great. Uh, can you comment on maybe an example in town that this would potentially be similar to? And what your expectations would be? 26th Street would be a great example. And we do not set the speed limit. That is all determined by MnDOT based upon the design. Correct. And I assume with there being a walking, biking trail, that's going to have some bearing on the speed. Would that be correct? It, it would, probably in a um, urban section setting, yes. Thank you. What, what's 26th? 26th Street footprint. Well, the right from curb to curb must be close to 50 feet or 55. Probably about 52 feet. That was the a curb. four lane on the line. Yeah, for, for, yeah. Which is the wider than what we're talking about. This it's actually one, the wider. We're talking about this way. 100 feet. There'd be another 25 feet on each side of that. Or if we pushed it east, there'd be more, yeah. more available to the west. Yeah, that's that's the difference. Um, Twenty six was built for the four lane section. We're not proposing four lanes on there. Can we back up to the uh, environmental impact study? Is that is that I know there's several there were several alternatives. You're looking at all of them. Is that correct? Well, we're looking at the five. So at our second open house, we we kind of showed those. I just had comments from people tonight that thought it's only 29th Street, but you're looking at other alternatives as well. They'll be in the documentation, yes. Thank you. So, you know, and the, you know, there'll be an alternatives analysis, and then there's an evaluation criteria. So the um, selected alternative will be the one that meets the criteria best. Thank you. So Greg, on, on 26th Street, do you know the distance from the roadway to the uh, green space at uh, McKinley School? Any idea what that distance is? Oh, no, I, I know. Sean says Murph, you got that? <laughs> I was just looking at it. Uh, so, uh, edge of curb to uh, property line? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's about uh, 27 feet. 27 plus feet. or minus. Okay, thank you. And that would, that would be, assuming that'd be about the same distance where the ball field is with the dugouts. Uh, where the dugouts would be, uh, those are, are well within uh, the property line. So uh, if you're going to a dugout, um, you probably add another 35 feet to that. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? If an urban section of this proposed road was built, does it have to be in the middle of the right of way or can it go to one side? I think we could push it easterly as much as possible here. Can we go to the 
two types of roadway. So on the west side, would that would that be considered a berm? Is that is that raised above the above the roadway, or is that the, uh, even with the roadway? Neither of these are shown. Okay. Okay. Um, We've had questions come up about mitigation. Does a environmental impact study address those types of issues as well? Uh, yes, it does. In fact, you know, that's the process. Uh, through the field studies and things we'll do, determine the impacts and then consider what the mitigations are for those impacts. That will all be documented in the final EAW and categorical exclusion. What are some of the options on that? Burns, trees, bushes? Uh, depending on what the impact is, those might be um, mitigations, absolutely. But until we have our study done, you really can't decide anything. Yeah, there's no decision going to be made until the documents are public. You know, they have to go through a public comment period, the county board will then ultimately have to either approve it or not. I think at, at one point in time, I thought I heard a figure of 750 trucks a day are projected to be down there. Can that be? I don't think that's um, going to be accurate. The traffic studies are being done right now, but right, 750 trucks a day, that'd be more than you got on Rose Street out there today. Um, so I, I think that was uh, kind of pulled out of the air um, from numbers that were done in the tra traffic studies from years ago. Um, and then somebody, you know, we just applied 5% or something, which is, you know, 5 or 6% trucks. On any. And how does, does truck mean semi truck? Um, not it's necessarily. Oh, so a pickup truck counts? Well, it wouldn't count a pickup truck, but any kind of a commercial size vehicle. I, I live on Rose Street and I can't believe that there's 750 no, commercial trucks a day that go there. That would be more than Costco. Pardon me? That would be more than Costco per oh, day. Yeah. And that, and previously it showed a connection to Highway 14, correct? And was that done at the same time when the assumption maybe would have been trucks would come off yes. 14, could get on 14? That's not even an option now. Correct. Do you see that as ever an option going to Highway 14? I, I don't recall my years on Highway 14 coalition. I don't I, I don't recall that ever being a discussion. I know. Yeah. I do. Uh, I don't believe there will ever be a connection to 14, but there's a possibility that might be an overpass on the but I think we can we can reasonably state that everybody here is open to mitigation efforts. Should we pick this corridor? We just we're unable to commit to a specific. Correct. Good point. I mean, Greg, would you say it's required from our environmental document? To mitigate if that's what's specified? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it sequence, you know, avoid, minimize, mitigate. Like, any impact, whatever the impacts are, avoid, minimize, mitigate. And again, Nate said if we choose 29th Street, is it more up to what is recommended after these studies? I'm not quite sure I understand. Well, Nate said, well, maybe, maybe if we choose 29th Street, we can. If we choose 29th Street, everyone would agree to mitigation. Oh, absolutely. But isn't it more that studies are going to dictate which is going to be the best route? The, the results of the studies will direct selection, yes. Okay. So even if even if they would say, well, 34th Street is, the, is by far and away the best, we probably would not say, well, we're, we want 29th. Probably not. But given all the... the the, the, all the studies that have been done out there and the purpose and need of this project, 29th is to be the obvious. 
And I think, isn't it true that we need both 29th and 34th? Well, it's all point time. Yeah. yeah, so we need both. It's not one or the other. Yeah, one of the points that I uh, didn't, didn't make um, strong enough was, you know, we've already lost that opportunity from Cedar going east. Um, we don't want to lose that. lose it again, right? To get to say, oh, 34 is sufficient. Um, it'll solve our problems. It won't. And, and it's, as the growth plan shows, if the city continues to grow to the east, we'll need another collector at 34. Greg, we're, you're showing 50 feet from the slope to beyond the, or right to the end of the trail. From that section west, uh, how far is that to the, to the, the property owners. We're we talking about the urban section. Yeah, I'm looking at the top top one, yeah. Or, and uh, and so where where this if this were placed out there, how much how much space is there beyond our right of way to the citizens property line? Well beyond the trail on the rural section, we probably have another ten feet or fifteen feet. Some minor buffer. Okay. But again, you know, part of that's going to be, you know, are we going to build a berm or not? And, you know, is there an impact if we need to have a berm? On so that would be the area for a potential berm, right? Or, or uh, if we do any berming, it'll be right off the edge of their okay. property line. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll close as far as we need. Would the expectation be that whatever the design ends up being, and that's consistent through the whole length, or would it possibly switch? It, it will probably switch. Like I was saying, um, most of the corridor is going through rural areas, right? Not, it's not adjacent to any housing. So, and it's, you know, economics. It's a lot uh, less expensive to build the rural section than the urban section. So does that change as housing developments Retail goes out there, or once it's once it's in as a rural, typical, it, it would remain that way. Uh, that or too early to tell. Um, I would uh, say that would could be up to the city's um, ordinances and such for development. I've seen it both ways, right? Okay. Um, you require the developers to put in the urban. Pieces like maybe urban garden storm sewer at their expense, particularly if they have a benefit to their properties. Um, um, and I've seen, seen where it doesn't get changed. Okay. <clears throat> will, this, will this be the same road north to south? <clears throat> or is there places where you could make two different, do some rural and some urban? Right, that's what I was saying. I think it'll be a combination of. Have funding for sources been determined for any of this road? Uh, right now, we have it fully funded within our capital program. You know, we got just under four million dollars in federal money. We're applying for some state money to the local road improvement program, um, but otherwise, it's uh, funded through the sales tax that the county board initiated in 2015. Right? And that has that has been a huge benefit to the county and the county system. Um, and I think. That's one of the reasons the road never got built. Uh, you know, over over the many decades that something's been planned, there just weren't the resources to do it. But there are the resources there. And all the uh, state statutes. Um, Ms. Simmons brought up a few today about that. Ms. Uh, again, remember what you called it? Put it pushing it away. Um, Abatements or abatement. Will those be taken into consideration too? Um, I mean, if if the state statute says abatement is number one, then that will show up on the survey, right, or the study I'm, that we're you know, doing. I'm, I'm not familiar with anything you're specifically talking about. What I will say is we're going to be following all the regulations and statutes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that might, if if in fact that's that's. Statute, we may, everyone may prefer 29th, but we're going to 34th because the state statute says that's what we have to. That'll show up in the study. Well, that will show up, yeah. Okay. 
to, to clarify, that was the avoid, minimize, uh, mitigate, and addressing the noise aspect of it, and getting it to within the safe thresholds of Minnesota regulations, which also the uh, city has adopted those same regulations. But we, we would be following all of that. Most likely, yes. Other questions for Mr. Wilton? We appreciate you coming and, and showing this to us. Um, there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of talk out there, and uh, uh, maybe we can all come to a common consensus someday. Well, I do appreciate the time and the support of the project, and uh, since I'm the county board, thank you. 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 A letter of support that's been prepared to support the uh, funding aspect. Is that correct? The funding aspect. Grant funds. Grant funds to explore explore all this. So um, the question there, I guess, what before us is to, uh, to issue a letter to the county supporting them pursuing to get their grant grant funding. So that's what's on the table here. I would. Uh, if any comments or questions, let's talk about that now. If there aren't, then uh, we go to a, I look for a motion to approve the letter. Motion to approve. Motion by Nate to approve the letter of support for the county. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Kevin. Is there any discussion regarding this? I would just like to reiterate this is develop a funding source no matter where the road is. Correct? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we're, a lot of things are getting talked about that are premature. Mm -hmm. Can we so, see those letters? We're not taking any comments right now. Um, we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great. That letter was in packet. The letter of support. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 All right. That completes our uh, action items this evening. We now move on to staff reports. And uh, Ms. Jenna, you've been sitting here patiently. Do you have something to talk about this evening? Just been waiting all night to <laughs> tell you about our ice rinks that aren't uh, forming yet. But, uh, our staff, we've been working on uh, setting up, transitioning from summer to fall to winter, and we do have a few neighborhood ice skate uh, rinks going up this year over in Buxler again, and also at Country View is a new one. Uh, we do uh, hope to have them open by the, uh, the holiday break, so typically that's when we get them. We're just needing some cooler weather. And then uh, if you haven't gotten your shopping done, we do have the gift of a give the gift of recreation campaign going on so if you're needing a gift certificate yeah it's available so that's what's happening in parking right it's okay you're open for that ice right <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you yeah. and sean the public works director so uh exciting news uh last week uh the roundabout at uh casa 48 or bixby road at 18 street southeast opened um uh you know it was a uh, a, a tough project uh, in, in dealing with some uh, a number of issues, uh, most notably the uh, the railroad. But it, it is now open, uh, so traffic. There's there's signs out there notifying of the traffic control change. Uh, some of the temporary measures that uh, were in place are now out. So I just want everybody, including those high school students, to be you know diligent and and aware of of all the signage and, and change in traffic patterns there. Um, you know, we had a little bit this morning, but uh, you know, so snow may not entirely be here yet, but I'm, I'm sure it will come at some point. Uh, I just have, a, have to give a plug out to our, our street maintenance workers and plow drivers that uh, you know, please give them some extra space when they are out. Uh, we do have a lot of operations that do involve going Reverse, uh, making sure that uh, streets, alleys, and everything else are completely cleared. So just be mindful of, of all of our uh, 
uh, staff that's removing snow uh, to whether it's in parks or, or on the streets. Um, uh, one last thing that is kind of similar to uh, one of the council agenda items that we had on here from uh, Public Works Department, uh, Anthony and our in our department along with uh, Rachel and uh, Human Resources attended the uh, Dakota County Technical College Career Day uh, today trying to uh, find some future candidates for uh, open positions within the, de the department. So uh, I appreciate them going up there and and pushing out the good name of Boatana. So. All right, thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Sean, anybody? How, how many other uh, how many other entities were up there dangling the carrot? I, I to be honest, I, I didn't get a count, but I know that uh, there were there were some fairly extravagant uh, setups, uh, not by uh, uh, government entities. But uh, Rachel took a lot of pictures of those. But it, it, it's it, it it's quite a challenging time uh, to find people in the field, um, and especially somebody in a uh, in our state. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, but we're not giving up. Thanks. Great, thanks, Sean. That completes our staff reports this evening. Now it's time for public comment. Anyone in the audience that wishes to speak, now is your opportunity. I ask that you come up to the microphone here, state your name and address, and limit your comments, comments to two minutes. Uh, speakers are asked to conduct themselves in a respectful manner as they deliver their comments. Audience members are asked to refrain from reacting to comments, and the City Council will not respond directly to comments in this venue or take immediate action in response to them. So anyone in the audience who wishes to speak, now is your opportunity to come and talk. Sir. Good evening, Council members. Matt Sennett, 2519 Stony Creek Drive. I'm here to speak about the Eastside Quarter Project. Um, let's be clear that I and many other residents are in support of the Eastside Corridor. The location of such a corridor effort is one of the most important considerations. The Eastside Corridor should be located at 34th Avenue, just a half mile east of our major residential developments on the east side of town, as recommended by MnDOT as well. This allows for safe distancing from existing residences, fosters future growth and development of Oatana on the east side, and further, the appeal further is the appeal of Oatana as a safe, community-minded, and family-friendly city to live in. The location currently being proposed by the city and county of 29th Avenue, as in the packet this evening, it is in one of those letters, is not in Oatana's long-term interest. In 1995, nearly 30 years ago, this route was first studied as a corridor or beltway. It may have made sense then that that ship has sailed. There were no residences in the immediate vicinity of this road back then, but it wasn't built. Again, the ship sailed. Fast forward 30 years later, we have thriving neighborhoods in this area, and as a matter of fact, houses now rest on top of portions of this right-of-way. Locating this highway corridor among established residences with small children at play, Many with disabilities would be reckless and irresponsible. In 2005, 29th Avenue was designated to be a residential street as outlined in the official 2005-2025 transportation plan. Why are we turning it into a highway? <clears throat> I and many residents of Oatana and Seal County are in support of the East Side Corridor. Again, let's be clear of that. But we must do the right thing and place it in a responsible location. That location would be 34th Avenue, again, recommended by MnDOT so many years ago. As a matter of fact, 34th Avenue is already a road that can be expanded for this purpose and has the least impact on farmers as would follow existing property lines in this location could be the east side corridor. It must be one that's safe, allows for growth and development of Boatana, commercial and residential, and does not undo much of what has done, been done to make our neighborhoods desirable and safe places to live, raise families, and keep Boatana beautiful Attractive and safe place to live in the Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, 
Melissa Zerman, 2525 Stony Creek Drive. Thank you guys for asking all of the questions. It's what we've been looking for. I wanted to give you guys a little timeline. In 1993, we did realize there was a need for an east side belt line. In 1995, we studied all the alternates, 119 pages, before we went down to a single route. In 1999, we studied a single route, but this report was never completed. It didn't address uh, community concerns, DNR, and uh, the Historical Society. From that incomplete report, we did have a corridor. You can't vary from the corridor without officially changing it. In, 19, or in 2004, we did have a joint powers agreement with a six-month yeah, six contention window on it to contend any permits pulled. <clears throat> in August of 2004, MnDOT did a report recommending against the MAP corridor and 34th Avenue as the internal collector. This is the only report that addresses an internal collector. In September of 2004, the first house was built on the right of way. That's six months after that joint powers of agreement was signed. In 2005, just 160 days after MnDOT's report, 34th Avenue was mapped as a 150 foot right of way. In the 2005 Steel County Transportation Plan and the 2006 Owatonna Development Plan, the map corridor was removed. It was replaced with a much shorter residential street that offered space between the residents and the highway. In 2009, the 34th Avenue and 44th Avenue were both officially mapped. In 2011, there was a final Beltline study. This officially adopted 44th Avenue as our Beltline. This is the information for a Beltline. Today we're building a corridor, not the Beltline. Today, we are lacking most of this information before we even got started. We're missing the same information we had before we ever got down to a single route. Why didn't we study alternates to decide what the best alternate was before we narrowed it down to one report? or one, one route. Uh, Mr. Ilka said uh, today that we are studying all of those routes, and I will look forward to seeing all of, those, uh, all of those routes in the report. However, we've been told previously that we're only narrowing it to one for this environmental study. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak this evening? Yes, sir. It's going to take you longer to get up than I get to speak. <laughs> you got a license for that? <laughs> Slow moving vehicle. Engine shut. Stands by homes, disc golfers, and playgrounds. 
Second, use bow hunters just hunt in the city's perimeter to keep deer out. By killing deer in city limits, other deer were going to fill that territory where they reproduce more. That's why the deer damage reports and collision accounts don't go down. You're just creating a perpetual supply of big game for the park and rec recreational hunt. But the problem is not addressed. Currently, this seems to be more like a park and rec activity and not really deer management. You need to cull the herd, use fences, cattle grades, and perimeter hunters to keep deer out of the city in the first place. Third, if deer control is needed, bring in professional sharpshooters for two days, as done in 2012, not the current eight weeks. Close the parks hunted in, keep park goers safe, give the park safely back to the taxpayers for these eight weeks every fall, or you're taking away some of the best park weather of the year. It's sad to see people walking their dogs through Middle Springs feeling the need to dress their dogs in blaze orange for eight weeks every fall. Far worse is the risk of tragedy happening when deadly forces neither professionally handled nor closely monitored in our city parks without kids. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else wish to speak this evening? Sir? Uh, 
very well done and they all had a great time. It's kind of demonstrating one of our core values of better together and um, was a lot of fun too. Uh, and then we earlier tonight we had our truth and taxation hearing where we presented an 8% levy for council consideration. Uh, that will be on the December 19th agenda for final action and approval by council. So I just wanted to mention those two things. Okay, thanks, Chris. And I just want to thank the Boy Scouts for coming. Hopefully you get to learn something about local government and how it works, and uh, you'll get some interest in it. And then I do want to comment about last night I had the opportunity to go up to our high school to the uh, auditorium and listen to the carolers, the uh, concert choir, and the symphony orchestra, in which often I'm a proud grandfather, my granddaughters and all three of those. But um, it was an excellent performance and it was great to see the mayor up on stage presenting the proclamation to one of my former instructors, Arnold Kruger, and uh, it, was, it was just a great night all around and it was uh, uh, Mr. Kruger is pretty spry for 95 years old, you bet. and uh, he is a kind of a cherished <coughs> member of our community. So I just wanted to thank Mayor for doing that proclamation. It was I think, well received, a beautiful name. So, thank you. So, that's all I have. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion by uh, Kevin, second by Dan. I'm sure there's no discussion. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We're done.